Okay, so now let's start on question 14, and let's do a dimensional analysis problem. Now here it says convert 134.4 kilometers per hour to kilometers per second. So it looks like kilometers stays the same, so we don't need to change that. But we do need to change hours to seconds. Now whenever you see a slash, always write it as a straight line. So start with 134.4, always start with the number given to you in the problem, kilometers per, write it like a straight line, and then hour. And if you have a, a unit down there, put a 1 next to it. Then you want to cancel out hours, not kilometers. Kilometers is good. You want to get rid of hours, though. So if you put hours on the bottom here, then you end up with hours, oops, hours squared, which we don't want. So we're not going to put hours on the bottom. Instead, let me erase that. Instead, we're going to put hours on top. And then they'll cancel because one's on the bottom, one's on the top. Now we got to get from hours to seconds. So let's go one hour is 60 minutes. There goes our hours. Now we got to get minutes to cancel, so we put minutes up top. One minute is 60 seconds. And now I personally circle what I have left when I'm done with the problem. This way I know that I've got the two units that I need, kilometers and seconds. And then I do 134.4 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 60, times 1 divided by 60, and then hit equals. And your calculator is going to spit out a big number. You're going to keep four sig figs, because what you start with is four sig figs. So it's 0, 0.0. Now we start counting three sig, or four sig figs. 3, 7, 3, 3. That's how many <clears throat> kilometers per second uh, we can travel. Okay. Part B. It says convert 134.4 kilometers per hour, same thing, to miles per second. So now, not only are we going to convert it to seconds, but we're also going to convert the kilometers to miles. So write down what you got, and write small, because it's just going to be a long problem. One hour. And then eeny, meeny, miny, mo. pick your favorite unit. Do you want to cancel hours out first, or do you want to cancel kilometers out first? It doesn't matter. You're going to do them both eventually anyways. Let's just keep going with the hours, since we did the hours above. So I'm going to get rid of my hours. I'm going to put one hour is 60 minutes. Then i got to get rid of minutes. So I put minutes on top. One minute is 60 seconds. So there goes my minutes. Now I have seconds. I want seconds. I want to end in miles per second. So I'm going to circle that so I know to stop. I'm not going to focus on time anymore. What I am going to focus on, though, is kilometers. If kilometers is up top, I need to get it to cancel by putting kilometers down here. And now kilometers will cancel. Then I say that one kilometer, or I'm sorry, 1.61 kilometers, right there, <clears throat> is equal to one mile. Now I circle mile because that's what I want. I want miles per second. So I've got miles on top, seconds on the bottom. Now all, I'm all done. I've set it up correctly, and as long as I do the math right, then uh, the, the answer should be correct. So 134.4 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 60 times 1 divided by 60 times 1 divided by 1.61. And when you're all done, you end up with 0 0.02319 miles per second. One second. And there's my answer for that one. Okay. So if you have a two-step problem, it doesn't matter which one you attack first, the top or the bottom, you're eventually going to do them all anyways. Alright, now it says how much would 37 eggs cost? So I'm looking for money. Figure out what you're looking for first. How much would 37 eggs cost if one dozen are sold for 199? One dozen and 199, that's a conversion factor. Think of that as a little card. One dozen equals 199. So keep that in mind. You're going to use that at some point in the problem. This is my loan number. I have nothing attached to this. So I'm going to start with 37 eggs. And then I'm going to put eggs on the bottom. So I get eggs to cancel. Now all I know is one dozen is 199, but I do know that there's 12 eggs in one dozen. Then I got to get rid of dozen. One dozen equals 199, and there go my dozen. Now I'm left with dollars, which is good because that's what I want. I want dollars. So I do 37 times one divided by 12 times 199 divided by one, and my final answer is. And you can write this in terms of money, so keep uh, the cents numbers, 14 cents, $6.14. 14 
So there's dimensional analysis. You will have dimensional analysis on the exam. You have to set them up correctly. And you have to use dimensional analysis. I'm not testing your fifth grade math skills. A little fifth grader could figure this out. What I'm testing to see is if you could use dimensional analysis. All right, density calculations. Now, if it's saying determine the density, then you just straight up do mass divided by volume. But if it says determine the volume, then you have to use dimensional analysis. And I'll show you what I mean when I get there. So it says determine the density of an unknown substance whose mass is 83.4 grams and the volume is 45.65. So we're going to do 83.4 grams over 45.65 milliliters. When you do the math out, the number cancels out to 1.83. I'll keep three sig figs because of my mass. 1.83 grams per milliliter. Your units don't cancel. Grams and milliliters don't cancel out, so you end up with grams over one milliliter. So there's your answer for the density problem. Now it says determine the volume. It's not saying density. It's giving you density, in fact. This is a conversion factor right here. So you could rewrite density as 3.45 grams over one cubic centimeter. So anytime you have a density value, you should immediately be thinking use dimensional analysis. So start with what you got. You've got 34.4 grams. Now grams is up here, so you're going to put grams on the bottom. And you want to end with volume, which is going to be either milliliters or centimeters cubed. Now the problem gives you centimeters cubed, so we can get rid of milliliters, and we'll just use centimeters cubed. So then you look at your density value. 3.45 goes with the grams. That's how many grams is equal to one cubic centimeter. So make sure you put the numbers with the correct units. One cubic centimeter is equal to 3.45 grams. So I basically flip my density over. So 34.4 times 1 divided by 3.45, and that comes out to about 9.97 cubic centimeters. And there's my volume. So if you're asked density, just do mass divided by volume. If you're given the density, and you're asked to find either the mass or the volume, then you're going to start with whatever you're given and flip density over whichever way you need it so the units cancel. Just think of density as a conversion factor. Okay, last one here. It says, imagine that you calculate the density of substance and it comes out to 3.45 grams per milliliter. After checking the reference book, you realize that it should really be 3.60 grams per milliliter. Calculate your percent error. So basically what you're going to do here is you're going to put what you got, what you should have gotten on top, and you're going to find the difference between the two. Now don't get too, too stressed. It doesn't matter if you put accepted value first and experimental value second. So you can put 3.45 minus 3.60, or you could have done the other way around, 3.60 minus 3.45. Either way, you're going to figure out the mathematical difference, and there should be absolute value signs here. You're going to get the absolute value of that. So it really doesn't matter if you're doing uh, this minus this or this minus this, because you're still going to just take the absolute difference. What is important, though, is to put the accepted value on the bottom. This is like when I give back your quizzes. If you get a 21 out of 25, the number that you should have gotten is on the bottom. So you're going to take the 3.60, because it should really be, in the reference book, it should really be 3.60, so that goes down here. So figure out your difference, divide it by that, multiply by 100, and then you end up with about 4.17% error. As long as you're in the ballpark, you're okay here. I kept three sig figs because all my numbers had three sig figs. Um, but again, as long as you're in the ballpark, you're okay. All right, so that's it on the basic math that we're going to be testing you on.